The upcoming winter storm setup is now expected to have two phases. That's phase one, and then here comes phase two. I'm gonna get into the details on both so that you can be aware of the impacts and ahead of the storm. Thank you for joining me in this update. In the last video, I discussed how changes in the winds in the atmosphere or the jet stream, like what you're looking at on screen, will result in big time changes across the United States later this week. There has actually been a bit of a change in the forecast about the changes, and let me show you what is coming. As we go towards the Thursday time frame, you can see this large scale dip in the jet stream coming down out of parts of the Western US and into the Central US. That aspect of the forecast has not changed. However, you see how it's kind of in two parts? This is one part moving out into the central US as early as Thursday. Then you've got the second part of this trough or dip in the jet stream really moving on through parts of the west coast region still. Since the energy will not be fully connected, there are going to be two individual low pressure systems that move east at the surface across the US. Each one will have its own impacts and I wanna get into those impacts now. Let's get into that future radar overview for the active weather ahead using this blended guidance. As we push this guidance out of the Wednesday early morning time frame and through the day, one thing you'll note is that you can actually see the two individual pieces of energy that I just pointed out on the jet stream. Here's energy area number one, bringing some rain and some high elevation snow to Arizona and New Mexico before it will move east. And then there's piece of energy number two, it will still be back in parts of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, where actually, especially as you go up in elevation, there will be some heavy snowfall ongoing out of Wednesday into Wednesday night. Here we go though, through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That's when we're gonna get the first phase of our active setup getting going, moving out of parts of the Southwest into the plains. There's your first surface low pressure system with that first piece of jet stream energy. Whenever you get low pressure moving out into the central US, you begin to develop a counterclockwise flow of winds because that's how winds flow around low pressure. Because the winds are coming from the south on the eastern side of the slow pressure system, they are able to tap into some of that moisture down from the Gulf region around Houston. Off the shores there from Houston to New Orleans, moisture will be coming up and floating on up to where it will come down in the form of precipitation around the low pressure system. In Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then over into Arkansas and Missouri, there could already be some showers and thunderstorms, a few of which could maybe even be on the stronger side as warmer air creeps in on Thursday morning. Eventually, this first area of low pressure will begin to slide to the north and east, and it will do so at a fairly quick rate as it rides some fast-moving jet stream energy. Moving out of Kansas and into Missouri, that's how this low pressure will go throughout the afternoon hours of Thursday. More than likely, that's going to mean a continued area of heavier rain right around the center of the low pressure as moisture comes up to it, falling down in Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois, there will be some quite heavy rainfall rates at times, and that could even disrupt the afternoon and evening commute time frames there on a Thursday in those areas. You'll want to take it slow on the roadways, especially if any heavier thunderstorms get in the mix. That is definitely going to be a potential, even continuing out of Thursday afternoon into Thursday night as the slow pressure moves east. Because of the fact that it will be bringing with it a warm front where temperatures will increase even more behind that boundary, as this slight cool frontal boundary on the back side of the low pressure system moves up into that warm sector there will be a chance for some thunderstorms that will get going out of thursday afternoon into thursday night into parts of the ozarks region the mid mississippi valley region and possibly getting over into the ohio valley where isolated severe weather could even be possible note on this guidance as well that with this first phase as it continues thursday night into early friday there will not only be the sector involving rain and the chance for thunderstorms around the ohio and mississippi valleys there will also be a small corridor where some snow could break out as cooler temperatures fill in behind the cold front and on the northwest side of the low pressure system into early friday morning parts of nebraska Iowa, Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan need to be on the lookout for some quick but heavier bursts of snow that could get going in a thin band late Thursday night into Friday morning. Eventually throughout the day Friday, this initial low pressure system will continue its slide to the east. That's where things will get interesting, especially by the middle of the day on Friday. You can see that by that time frame, the original low pressure marker will be all the way on up here into parts of Southeast Canada. The warm air will have risen all the way up into the southern part of Canada with that low pressure system, and there will be rain falling even as you go up into places like Toronto. Now, as you extend back down behind the low pressure system, that's where its technical cold front will be, even though temperatures won't drop very much behind it for the time being. Out ahead of that cold front, there will already be thunderstorms in place, some of which could be on the stronger side in that warmer sector from parts of Kentucky, 
and Tennessee stretching back down into the rest of the Deep South and Lower Mississippi Valley region. While some of those storms could be severe, the chance for severe weather will actually only increase as Friday rolls on. Why? Because that second piece of energy will move out and begin to create its own secondary warm front. Here it comes, low pressure moving into the Missouri vicinity with snow on its backside with north to south winds coming in there. And then here's your flow of south to north winds, yet another push of warmer air. And late on Friday, that could mean the thunderstorms from Kentucky and Tennessee back down into the rest of the deep south could really pick up in intensity as they continue to train over some of the same zones. That means a couple of things. Number one, increased rainfall rates with a chance for flooding really going on the rise in this region. Number two, the chance for severe weather will increase, especially in zones that go a little bit more untapped from some of the earlier day rainfall. Regardless, it certainly looks like this secondary piece of energy will be quite feisty, and by Saturday morning around the sunrise time frame, it will be lifting northward. As the low pressure with this second phase moves up pretty much along the same track as the original one, there will be an area of very heavy rainfall, the chance for flooding and isolated severe weather from parts of the Ohio Valley back down to the deep south. It does look like there will be an increased chance for some snowfall on the north side of the low pressure system as moisture wraps around into Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and northern Illinois. Now watch the overall evolution of the second system expected out of Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon. Here you go, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m. You got an expanding area of low pressure expected around far southern Canada. With that low pressure in place, there's its new warm front lifting north and into the northeastern U.S. and bringing another shot of heavy rain. There could have been some on Friday with that first system. Heavy rain will move into the northeast again, especially on Saturday with this second system. There's its cold front, which will actually have more in the way of cold air behind it. In that warm sector between the warm front and the cold front, that's where you get the best chance for storms, especially from parts of the mid-Atlantic back through the Appalachians to the southeast U.S. That's where storms could even be on the severe side at times with wind and hail as main threats, but maybe a threat for tornadoes with some shifting winds in the atmosphere late on Saturday. I also don't want to exclude the fact that it will be snowing quite heavily late on Saturday into parts of the upper Midwest, stretching into the Great Lakes region based on this current guidance. This second phase of the low pressure will definitely be a little bit more of a snowmaker in the impacted zones. Even into Saturday evening and the overnight hours, parts of Wisconsin and Michigan will likely still be seeing snow, while the cold front will continue progressing east towards that east coast area. Around Sunday morning at 4 a.m., there could still be some gusty winds and strong storms pushing out ahead of that cold front into parts of the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, and then eventually it does look like precipitation will begin to wrap up throughout the day on a Sunday at some point, with the exclusion of lake effect zones and interior northeast snowfall. Now that we just got through that extensive timeline, I do want to show you a recap of everything I just talked about before I get into the specific snow totals or the specific rain totals expected out of this system. It's worth noting that as we get the two low pressure systems moving through the west in the next 48 to 72 hours especially, heavy high elevation snow will be possible in those zones. Eventually, between phase one and phase two of the low pressure systems, there will likely be a mix of rain and then eventually some snow in both events or the second event or just full-on snow in some parts of the north central U.S. You can see that especially in that corridor moving out of the plains into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, that's where the best chance for snow or a mix from rain to snow will be between the two events. Further down to the south, rain and storms will be a concern, especially in that red zone from around Thursday night through Saturday night. That's where I'd be concerned in parts of the deep south, the lower Mississippi Valley, the southeast, for the chance of flooding in severe weather. Ultimately, one of the best things you'll be able to do to avoid some of the impacts from this activity will be to try and take it slow on the roads or just stay off the roads. With the timeline and impacts recap in mind, let's take a look at just how much rain and just how much snow can be expected through the various parts of this event. Pushing things out of the Wednesday and Wednesday night time frame through Thursday and Thursday night, that's when the main heavy rainfall from the first phase of this storm will be. That's going to result in half an inch to one and a half inch totals of rain in the heaviest zones in parts of the Midwest, stretching up into the Great Lakes. Some of this precipitation in Minnesota and Wisconsin, for example, will fall as snow. Either way, most of this will likely not be much of a flooding hazard in those zones. Even though it will come down quickly, you'll just want to take it slowly on the roads if you get caught in the heavier downpours. When the flooding threats will increase, that's going to be along that lingering boundary from phase one, and then as it gets picked up by the second system in phase two. Look at the total rainfall by the time phase two will have moved off most of the east coast into Sunday afternoon. 
you can see that especially with that rainfall coming Friday, Friday night into Saturday, parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, into Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, as well as even into Kentucky and the Appalachians, we'll be getting upwards of two inches of rain on the widespread scale. Those reds indicate the potential for upwards of three to four, possibly getting on up towards six to eight inches on the locally higher end. That amount of rain in the span of a day or maybe a day and a half will be enough to cause flooding. That's why you'll want to take it slow on roads and especially avoid roads that are being covered by overflowing creeks and rivers and streams. It is worth noting though, again this is why I only have lighter greens further east, once the severe weather and flooding threats ramp down in these zones, rain won't push east in as heavy of an extent and the east coast will only get some half inch to inch and a half totals at the higher end most likely. What about projected snow totals? Let's use this blended guidance from the European Ensemble system to see just how much you are projected to get. Pushing things out of Tuesday through Wednesday and then through Thursday, I want to start with the snow totals in most of the west. Out of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and then down through the rest of the Mountain West, through Thursday, Thursday night, and into early Friday at the latest, upwards of 6 inches of snow will fall in some cases, especially in the northwestern high elevations. From there, we'll get phase one of the winter weather ongoing through Thursday night into early Friday in parts of the upper Midwest. Right now, current guidance is only projecting a measly inch to three inches in many cases with that band. However, I wouldn't be surprised if some zones end up getting closer to five or six on the very isolated end in a thin corridor. The heavier snow on the larger scale will come with that second phase, although that won't even be too much based on this current guidance. You can see that it will add some additional snow in parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota, as well as over into Michigan. There will also be a little bit more snow further south and east with that second phase, totaling up to over an inch to maybe closer to three inches in some parts of Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, northern Indiana, as well as the southern part of the Glove of Michigan, though it could change. This guidance certainly has suggested the fact that snow totals really aren't going to be too bang boom in parts of the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. With that being said, that's about all I wanted to get into in this update. I'll likely have one more update probably on Thursday to provide a final insight, especially into the severe weather and the specific snow totals. For now, though, let's get into the headlines recap for this forecast, where I'd like to say that headline number one is a winter storm with two phases is now expected to finish the week. Snow and severe weather will be the main concerns. Phase one will bring some initial rain for many areas, with severe weather also possible into Thursday night in the Mid-South. Phase two will pretty much pick up all the impacts from phase one and magnify them a bit, involving stronger energy. So there will be some heavier northern snow and an increased severe risk in the warmer air further south with that one. Again, I'll provide likely more insight into the severe risk and more in a final update around the Thursday time frame. If you want to catch that update, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications on. For now, that's about all I have to say, other than the usual reminder to check out Weatherbell if you want access to model maps like the ones that I use in my content. I'll put the free trial link to that in the description. Otherwise, hit that like button to show support on this video. Make sure you're subscribed if you want more in the future. And that's about it. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless you all. Stay safe. One Nation Weather.